Today, I'm going to be showing you how to do this box highlight effect you see in a lot of the videos. But make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to show you 9 techniques and 3 different levels that make this effect better each time. So, I'm already in my composition and I've got my newspaper loaded up as well. Uh, to do the highlight effect is actually quite simple. Um, we're basically just going to draw a stroke through what we want highlighted. So I'll show you how to do that. So you want to come up here to the pen tool. And we're just going to draw the stroke straight through. Uh, you might have a fill selected. Um, if you do, just click fill options and click this for none. Your stroke is fine for now. We'll change that later. I actually like it to be a little bit smaller just so I can see what I'm doing. And then we'll go back and expand it later. Um, so we're just going to draw a line through this. Uh, I think it looks best if it's not a straight line. Um, just a little jagged, but uh, you might have a different preference. So it's up to you how you do this line. I like just a little bit of variance in it. And I think that typically looks best. So I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. And maybe bring this down as well. Once you have your line drawn, this is when I like to come back and make it bigger just to cover the entirety of the wood. And then uh, you can set the color to anything you want. I'm just going to do a yellow color. And I think that looks pretty nice. Now the next step is to animate this line. So uh, to do that, it's actually quite easy as well. Um, you just need to come and drop this down and where it says contents, you have a add here. Uh, this is for adding animators. Uh, we want to add the trim paths. So what this is going to let us do is change the end percent and start percent of this. Um, so we see the end percent is already at 100%, so that means it's all the way done. So we're going to set the end to zero and set a keyframe. And then we want to come forward uh, just a little bit and then set the end back to 100. So what that's going to do is it's going to animate on uh, kind of like a highlighter would. I'm going to bring these a little bit closer just so it's faster. And I think, I think that's pretty good. Just a little bit closer might be better. There we go. So now to actually make this uh, look like it's sitting on the paper and it's actually a marker, uh, we're going to come to the modes here on the layer. Uh, so I'm going to rename this to highlight so we can keep track of it. And I'm going to name this, uh, we're going to set this mode here uh, to be multiply. And that actually gives the effect that it's actually sitting on the paper. Uh, I'll show you one more thing they do. Uh, then I'll show you how to really level up this effect and make it look a lot better. So what we want to do is oftentimes with Vox, you'll see they use non-linear keyframes. So we're going to change the speed of this just a little bit. And I'm actually going to make this a little bit longer so you can see it. So you want to select both of your keyframes and come into this graph editor here. And you might be on the value graph, so you want to make sure you're in the speed graph. And I'm just going to zoom in so this is easy to see. A shape I really like to do, and I noticed they do a lot as well, is this kind of shape. And this is going to really give you like a speed up and a slow down. So it's going to start slow and finish, um, finish slow as well. Now I'm going to show you how to really level this up and make it look a lot better. So I'm in the same composition as before and now I'm going to show you how to really take this to the next level and make it look as crisp and polished as Vox does. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a overlay and this is going to give us interesting shadows. You can find the exact overlay I'm using in my Discord server which is in the description. So immediately you can kind of see it gives us these black spots so it's more interesting and not so dual to look at. Another thing you can do is add a adjustment layer. And we're going to add a vignette to this. You want to make sure you use CC vignette. So with the vignette, you want to make sure you don't increase it too much or you're going to get these very harsh edges. You want it to be a very subtle and I think this is probably good. Uh, finally, probably the most important effect is going to be the levels effect. So 
as you can see now our paper's kind of dull the black's kind of like a off black you know we kind of just want to make the black more prominent so it's easier to read and easier on the eyes so i'm going to add this levels effect to the newspaper and i'm just gonna bring the blacks up just so it looks a little bit nicer and you can play around with it uh, until you get something you like i think this here is good uh, so if you turn the effect off you can see it really makes a noticeable difference in just bringing up the quality and making it a lot easier to look at. So another thing I like to do is add a flicker to this. So if your article is going to be on the screen for a long time, uh, sometimes it's nice to just have a little movement um, so that you're not just looking at a still image. So to do this, I'm going to take a brightness and contrast. And I'm going to hold Alt while clicking on the stopwatch up here for the brightness. And that's going to open up the expression menu and I'm going to type a simple expression. We're just going to do wiggle with the arguments 2 and 20. So what that's going to do is every two seconds, it's going to plus or minus this by 20. So it'll move by 20. So we play that back. You can see you really have just some flickering, some dimming and lighting. So in the next level, I'm going to show you how to take this up one more notch and it's going to make your article look very polished and it's probably something you're going to want to do to all of your articles in the future after you learn this trick. So in this next section, I'm going to show you a few additional effects we can do and work our way up to the very last effect. This last effect is going to really make it pop and it's probably going to be something you want to do to all of your article animations in the future. So to start, I'm going to pre-compose this layer that we have. So I'm just going to highlight everything and uh, do pre-compose and we'll just name this something like newspaper. So our goal is going to be to make it blurred on the edges and I have this uh, text that we're actually highlighting in focus here. So to do that, I'm going to add a camera to our scene. So just right click and click camera and you want to make sure you're on 50 millimeter. Uh, and make sure you have depth of field enabled. So I'm just going to call this camera and hit OK. Right, and you can just hit OK on this. So the next thing you want to do is I'm going to add a new object and this is what's going to control our camera. So I'm going to call this camera controller. And I like to set my controllers to green so they're easy to see in the scene. So now I'm going to make this a 3D object and make our pre-composition a 3D object as well. And I'm going to take our camera object and parent it to the controller. So now when we move the controller, the camera will move as well. Uh, so I'm just going to give this a slight tilt and I'm going to bring it in as well. So we're going to come into it. And I want to do two things here. So uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, as we highlight, I want to follow the highlight. So I'm going to set a position here, a keyframe, and then come over to where the highlight is done. And then I want to move in this direction so that we're actually following the highlight. So I'll make this a little bit faster as well and I'm going to give this a easy ease and I'm going to come in here and have it slowing down at the end. So now that we have this animation going back and forth with the camera, the next thing I want to do is set the focus distance uh, so that we're kind of focused only on the thing that we're highlighting. So we have our depth of field enabled. And this focus distance, I like to set it to something like a thousand and then work up from there. Uh, so you can see that made it a little blurry, but let's do 500. Uh, just so we can really see that it's out of focus. Okay, so now we can slowly bring this up just until what we want in focus is in focus. And 
and we want the stuff below it to be slightly out of focus. If you want this blur to be more extreme, you can play around with the aperture, um, and that's going to change the settings, and you would have to change your focus distance too. Uh, but I'm happy with this, so I'm going to keep it like this. So this final effect I'm about to show you is a pretty powerful effect, and you'll probably want to do it in all your animations in the future. Uh, so I'm going to go into the pre-comp here and uh, show you what it is. So I'm going to use a plugin for it, but you don't have to, so stick around for a little longer and I'll explain more about that. Uh, so I'm going to come over here and I'm using plugin everything, fast chromatic aberration. So immediately you can see in these corners up here, it's kind of giving us this rainbow around the edges. And that's just going to make everything look a lot nicer, especially when you're up close with it. If you want to learn how to do this effect with outer plugin, uh, I have a tutorial for that, so uh, watch that next. <laughs> 